Hello out there from everybody here at FixAZ.com. Today looks like we're going to be disassembling an iPod Nano Generation 6. As always, before we get started with our repair, let's review our suggested tools. Small Phillips screwdriver. Plastic opening tools. A heat gun or a blow dryer. To get started with this process, we want to begin to heat up the outside edges of the display assembly to try to soften up that adhesive. A minute or two with the heat gun should suffice. And on this particular unit, we want to make sure that when we're prying up on the display assembly, we want to go at it from the speaker jack side of the iPod since our ribbon wire is on the other side of the unit and we don't want to put too much tension on it, possibly causing damage. Let's take our plastic opening tool, see if we can't slip it under our display assembly here. Be patient, a little careful. And once you get some separation in there, let's go ahead and start working around the perimeter of that display assembly and gently prying it away from the iPod. Once pulled back, you're going to notice two things, the metal cover covering the guts of the iPod up as well as the ribbon wire still holding the display assembly into the unit. Our next step is going to take our small Phillips screwdriver and remove the two Phillips screws that are securing the metal plate um, for our display assembly cables. With our screws out, we can go ahead and take that metal plate out of the unit. That's going to reveal our two connections for our display assembly. We're going to want to take our plastic opening tool and gently pry up on these two connections, disconnecting them from the motherboard. and that's gonna release our display assembly from our iPod unit. That was a pretty quick disassembly. Let's go ahead and start prepping our unit for the reassembly of our new replacement part. To do so, the first thing we wanna do is clean out any residue or debris that was left behind by our old adhesive on our previous display assembly. Your new replacement part will likely come with new adhesive strips already applied to it. If it does not, utilize the adhesive strips that were supplied by FixEasy.com and you're going to want to cut new strips and set them in place accordingly to secure your new display assembly. Now let's go ahead and start working towards putting our display assembly back into the iPod unit. Starting with our two plugs, we can gently push those connections back into our motherboard and then we want to go ahead and reinstall our metal cover. Our two Phillips screws are going to go ahead and secure that metal cover down back into the unit. Make sure these small rubber grommets that cover up the screws are put back in their location. I will show you quickly here how to apply a FixEasy.com adhesive strip that I've cut with a razor blade. Cut it to size, peel back one side, and apply it accordingly. With our adhesive strips in place, we can go ahead and peel off their covers and get ready for our last step, which is securing our display assembly back down to the iPod. Be very careful with the ribbon wire as you're situating it back onto the iPod. Do not kink it or bend it with your installation of the display assembly. Once you fit your display assembly back down, the assistance of a heat gun or blow dryer will go ahead and heat up that adhesive to help it adhere to the unit and gently push down around the perimeter of the display assembly to finalize your installation of your replacement part. All of the parts and tools you've seen today in this video are available at www.fixez.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter.